What's going on guys? Today in this video, I'm going to be bringing you a color grading tutorial. Weird color grading tutorial. Uh, this actually started by me attempting to show you guys how to recreate a similar color that you're seeing in this video right now with me in the studio. But after trying and trying and trying, I've just come to the conclusion that trying to create something like this is really just too difficult to do within Adobe Premiere Pro. That just is what it is, man. I've tried so many times. It's it's really difficult. But uh, the way that I do color grade typically uh, to create something like this is within a program called 3D Luck Creator. I dropped the video one of a while ago. If you're interested in checking it out, just click above. But regardless of that, um, I've created a color. Uh, it isn't this one, but it's really cool. And I think that it will look really cool in music video. So it went from that to this to uh, something that will look really cool in music video. So yeah, man, let's just get straight into it. Let's just run it. This is going to be random. Uh, it's going to be cool, though, man. Let's just uh, head over to Premiere. So we're in Premiere Pro. And uh, like I said, this originally started with me trying to recreate something that you're seeing uh, in the studio, what I typically use on my YouTube video. So it the base grade of it is just a generalized teal and orange uh, LUT, basically. That's what I tend to use on my YouTube video. So the base grade of this is that. I'll let you see the before of this clip. Um, this is the before of the clip. You can see it's super flat. This is from the Sony a6300. Shot in S-Log too. So it's just a really, really, really flat grade. And uh, this is the after, but you can see it's some really cool color switches in there and this will look really cool in a music video. So this is a music video tutorial now, a color grading tutorial anyway. So let's just uh, get it started, man. I'm doing way too much talking. Um, so I'm just gonna take that original, I'm just gonna take that original Lumetri color off. Just delete it and then we're just gonna start this from scratch. So click on it. We're just gonna go through and do some of our basic tonal adjustments. Um, get to a nice frame, sharp. We'll just use this one right here. Basic tonal adjustments, this is not gonna be perfect. Uh, typically when I go through and do color grading, it takes forever. It's a lot of me going back and forth and tweaking colors, but for the sake of this video, it's not gonna be that long. So we're just adding some contrast to this shot. This was shot in an overcast day. Um, well, it is an overcast, but uh, the actual location that the artists were in was pretty shaded. So this, I don't wanna get it too much contrasty, but I do wanna get those, uh, those colors to really pop in there. Drop the shadows down. And uh, I'm gonna go to my color wheels and drop these shadows down because I have no clue. Premiere is such a weird program, and I wish um, I wish Adobe would bring speed grade back. But I don't know if you guys use Lumetri scopes, but just look at my scope menu right now for, as a reference to what I'm trying to say. So if I bring my shadows back up, you can see uh, that they go back up. Now I'm gonna adjust the shadows down. No matter how down I bring the shadows, they just won't drop below a certain point. You guys can see that at the bottom of the Lumetri scope. Now, if I put these back up and I go to my color wheels, my color wheels and drop the shadows down right here in this menu, you can see it goes so much lower. I don't get that. That's so weird. I don't. That's something that Adobe does. I don't know. So for me, when I'm doing my color grading and just my tonal adjustments, I'll adjust this to get my shadows closer to black without actually deleting that data, if that makes sense. So you can see right here when I adjust these shadows, if I were to bring those all the way down on the Lumetri Scopes panel right there, they go way down. Like, you know, they can pretty much hit the, uh, the zero point on the scale. So um, when I wanna get my blacks closer to, my shadows closer to a black tone without deleting that data, I'll just go through and adjust the shadows in the color wheels panel because it's so weird. So just gonna drop those down, get them real close to black. And then uh, we'll go through and, you know, kind of adjust the shadows a little bit as well. Drop those down. And I kind of want the whites to pop a little bit. I don't want this too contrasted. Just up them a little bit. And I mean, for the most part, this is good. Drop the highlights down just a little bit. This is fine. This isn't super high uh, detail. This is going to be a super detail um, tutorial. So I'll up my saturation. Uh, to like uh, around the 120. I don't want it too crazy. And I think that's good for tonal adjustments. Like I said, if I were to do this on a real music video, I would go back to this like a hundred times. So we've done that. We'll do our basic correction. Now we can go down to the curves panel. Now, another thing that I like to do for tonal, tonal adjustments 
as well is I like to just undo that. Um, I like to kind of bump the midtones up. So I'll put two points right here and then I'll put a point in the middle and then I'll just bump it this way. And this kind of like increases the contrast in the midtones. If you look at the Lumetri scopes, it's kind of stretching those midtones out a little bit. So it's kind of just bumping up the contrast there. So I'll bump that up a little bit just to make the skin tones pop. And then bring the highlights down so they don't clip. Bring them down just a little bit. And uh, yeah, go back to the basic correction. Drop the shadows down a little bit. Not too much, it's probably too much. That's cool, that's fine. I'm not gonna do this forever. So look, um, curves. And uh, we're gonna go back to our color wheels. And now we're gonna get to the teal and orange base gradient of this. So essentially what I'll do is I'll first adjust my shadows. So I'll bring the shadows down to like more of a teal or blue tone. This is solely up to you. There's so many different variations of teal and orange. I like mine to be more towards the blue side than the teal side, but you know, right in the middle is a good mix. And this is gonna affect the uh, the skin tones. Don't worry about that, because we're gonna go back and fix those. So just focus on the background and just the neutral colors and get those to like a tailish tone that you would like. Um, I think that that's good right there for me. Slide those over to the left a little bit. I think that's good. Um, yeah, it's fine. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is get our skin tones back. So if we go down to the HSL secondary, uh, tab. Essentially what secondaries is, is it lets you solo out a group of colors uh, for you to solely adjust within Adobe Premiere Pro. Now other programs have this in a lot easier and simpler form, but uh, this is just Adobe's Lumetri rendition of that exact same thing. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is click this little plus dropper. This is going to allow us to select a color and I'm just going to go through all of the musicians or just the people within the scene and click on their skin tones just so we can keep those. So click right there we'll go on this artist right here we'll click on his skin tone uh, we will click on his skin tone and so on and so forth just everybody who was in the shot um, who has relatively brown to uh, not even brown just skin tones in general I just said that for my shot um, all right now if we click this little box right here it's gonna allow us to see um, what we have highlighted. So you can see it's a lot that we don't have highlighted. What we can do is if we go down to this last slider and we just stretch this out a little bit, it's gonna allow us to kind of improve on a little bit more of the tones. And another thing that we can do is just simply continue to click on the plus icon of those skin tones that we don't have. Or you can just hold and drag it around, which works as well. Um, but this just allows you to see what you do have selected. So I'm just gonna slide mine out a little bit more. Um, not too much. See if we do it too much. Well, actually, let's drag this out fairly far just to make sure we get those skin tones in there. And then the next thing that we're going to do is just up the denoise a little bit. We're going to denoise those colors just a little bit, make them smooth. And uh, the next thing that we're going to do is up the blur. So without the blur, you can see that this looks incredibly choppy. It looks very spotty. And that if we just started to adjust the colors, it just wouldn't look good. So we're just going to up the blur so that the fine line between the skin tones and the other tones within the image aren't as fine line as they were. So just up this to whatever you want. Um, I think that this looks good. I don't know, you, you, you never really know until you, you start to adjust the color. So that's just us getting the skin tones um, selected. And now we'll just drag our color adjuster to um, the skin tone. So skin tones typically lie within the reds and the yellows more like the orange tones so i'm just going to get them to the tones that i like them at and then now we're going to adjust the saturation right here to bring it down and get it to look more natural and this is going to be like a back and forth a back and forth process if that makes sense so i'm going to drop the saturation down i think that that looks good i'm going to go back to the color wheels and i'm going to adjust the teal tones that we originally put into the video and I'm going to drag those more to the tail side and then we're going to go back to the secondaries and we're going to maybe boost up the saturation just to keep the skin tones uh, to where they naturally are. So another thing that we can do um, is to click on other tones within the video that we don't want solely blue. So if I'm, I'm going to click on the, the plus eyedropper and I think that his shirt is too blue, but I'm not going to click on uh, the lighter side of it, I'm going to click on the darker side of it just because I want the shadows to kind of still be a natural tone and not super blue. So click there, 
I get that back. I'm going to do that also in the artist hair. Do that. Bring it back. And we can even just adjust those skin tones back up to brown. Drop the saturation down so it looks natural. Like I said, this is a back and forth process. Um, I'm going to click within this area right here to bring some of those tones back. And uh, yeah, this is a back and forth process. Go back. Bring this more down. So like a tail and orange tone. And I think that this looks good. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to exclude the colors within the frame that we don't want. So this image is naturally very green just because of where we shot it at. And I don't like the greens. They're super poppy. They can just go. So we go to our curves tab. You can see we have the hue saturation curves right here. So these, this is how you solo all different colors within the shot and uh, take them out. So if we click within the orange, not the orange, uh, the green, I'm just going to click them all on just because having all the points just makes sense. So click them all on so you have every single point on it and just we're just going to go through and start to solo out a few of these actual colors within the shot. So green, I said we don't want. So we're going to start right here. The color on the edge of the teal and green, we're just going to drag it towards the center. And when you drag colors towards the center, it's just taking a saturation out of them. So we just keep going through um, and we just do the colors that we don't want. So you can see right here, this is like solely where that green tone is. We drag this towards the center, it's taking it out. So just keep dragging to get them to a space that you want them. Like I said, I don't want the greens at all. I think that they, uh, I think that they, um, they don't add to this to this shot, especially for the blue and uh, the, the teal and orange tone that I'm going for for the video. Um, one thing to note though is when you start soloing out colors to make sure that you never really adjust the skin tones or just adjust the skin tones to what you want them. So typically skin tones lie within these three right here. If I were to drag this down, you can see we're losing our skin tones. We don't want to do that. But whatever other color that you you know you want to solo out, you can do it. And you can go as drastic as you want. Like you can go all the way in if you want. Uh, and this is gonna like provide like a very trippy music video look, but this is very music video esque, if that makes sense. Um, it's just very music video esque. So if we solo those colors out like that, I think that that looks cool. Uh, this is like a really cool music video vibe ish for the um, the color grade, and I think that it looks very bright now. Um, just to get it contrasty to how a music video will look, I'll probably drag the shadows down. Drop the shadows down. Um, go back to my color wheels. I think that is too blue. So I'm going to bring the bl blues back a little bit. And I think that that looks cool. This is like a really cool grade. Um, I feel like the skin tones maybe are popping a little bit too much. I'm going to go to the curves. Drop the orange down on the skin tones to get them look to look a little bit more natural. And I think that that looks straight. So if we just to, just to go through and solo out the different things that we just added to this actual color grade. If we take the curves off, you can see the green comes back in. Add that on, takes the green out. And you know, we can solo, solo out other colors within this as well. Like say, well, it's not really healthy to adjust reds just because reds are typically where the skin tones lie and like lip colors and stuff like that. So if you were to try to solo out the red in this bandana, you might run into some issues within the artist's you know, lips and stuff like that. But you know, this is on you to be aware of the shot that you're shooting because it's it could be millions of different colors within a shot. So this is on you uh, to really go through and adjust. And you know, like you can see right here, we're adjusting this and bringing this down. It's taking the colors with, out of the background. Uh, just be mindful of the artist and the uh, the person's face within the shot and to not make them look crazy. So uh, yeah, if we turn the curves off, you can see got rid of the blues. If we turn off the this is this is what the shot would look like if we did not do the secondary adjustments like this looks crazy within the skin tones of the person in the shot. So use those to bring the skin tones back. And uh, I'm just going to scrub through just to make sure there are any crazy looking colors within any of the artist's skin tones. And I think that that looks good. Another thing that we can do just to make the, the gray really pop is we can also adjust the contrast within the skin tones that we adjusted. So um, we can up the contrast and you can see that that's making the gray pop a little bit more too. This is very music video-esque. Um, you know, the oranges are popping a little bit too hard right here in the artist's face. I'm gonna drop this 
the saturation and the, the orange down just a, just a tad bit. And that looks fire, man. I think that that looks really good right there. Um, so this is like a really cool, trippy, kind of like different color grading tutorial. It started with me trying to create something like this, turned into this, which looks really cool. So if you're shooting a music video, this is gonna look bananas for what you're doing. And uh, if we, there's so many different things you can do here. I don't even wanna show you everything that you can do. But if you go back to the color wheels, drag the colors to the green. Now we got a green-esque music video look. It's just, it's too many things that you can do to make this look cool. I typically do blue. I know teal and orange is like super popular right now, but the reason that teal and orange, it has been super popular within the film industry and just music videos and color grading in general is because these colors go really well with each other. Typically skin tones are within that orange range and blue and orange are two colors that just look really well together. But green doesn't look bad either because green and orange go together really well also. So take it for what it is, man. This is gonna wrap up my color grading tutorial for music video color grading i don't know what to call it i don't know what this is this just looks really cool so take it for what it is turn it into your own thing uh and use some of the tips that i showed you i know a lot of you guys didn't even know what secondaries did so use secondaries to your advantage if you're color grading to get the skin tones back to where they should be so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to drop me a like comment also subscribe to the channel if you're new here let me know down in the comments what you thought about this tutorial my bad hold on let me know in the comments what you thought about this tutorial, uh, honestly, because I'm interested to know. If you guys enjoyed it, I'll continue to do more like this, but uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird to me. I'm just freestyling. So, like I said, drop me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Peace out, guys. Yeah.